Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will discuss about stability criteria of control system. In this video, I will discuss about in total six different stability criteria. Let us start this video with first stability criteria. See, first stability criteria states that a system is stable as if output is bounded with respect to bounded input. So, as if you have bounded output with respect to bounded input, then system is stable. Let me explain that by one example. Here we have control system, and with this control system, input is R of T and output is C of T. Let us apply one input signal over here. That input signal is unit step input signal. So, this input signal is bounded input signal. Bounded means here there is upper limit. This input signal cannot go beyond 1, means this is bounded input. This control system will be stable as if it is producing bounded output. Let me show it by some waveforms. So, here as if you have output that is sinusoidal, you can observe. Then this is bounded output. Bounded output means, see this output that cannot exceeds this upper limit and this lower limit. Means B1 system is stable over here as it is producing bounded output. Let me show one more waveform. Let us have output that is ramp output. As if output is ramp output, then there is no upper limit. Means it is unbounded output. As if output is unbounded, then one can say system is unstable. Right. So, first stability criteria that states that as if you have bounded output with respect to bounded input, then system is stable. Right. Now, I'll discuss about second stability criteria. See, second stability criteria is based on asymptotically stable system. A system is asymptotically stable as if output tends towards zero in absence of input, irrespect of zero initial conditions. So, with asymptotically stable system, you will be observing output is going towards zero as if you don't give any input. Let me explain that by waveform. Like here, if you observe, we have one input signal and this input signal that is getting zero over here. So, after input is zero, your output should go towards zero. For example, if you observe here waveform, then See this waveform that is producing sinusoidal output. So that is bounded, right? But once input is going towards zero, output is approaching to zero, right? Output is decaying with respect to time. So one can say this system is asymptotically stable system, right? So as if you don't give any input, then output should go towards zero. That is asymptotically stable system, right? Now, I'll discuss about third stability criteria that is based on location of poles. The stability of the system depends on poles. If all the poles are located in left half of S plane, then system is stable. Let me explain that by one practical example. Here you need to understand transfer function. See if you have system and with system if you have transfer function that is ratio of output to input then here we have numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial. Roots of numerator polynomial explains zeros of the system and roots of denominator polynomial that explains poles of the system. So, roots of numerator polynomial that gives zeros 
and roots of denominator polynomial that gives poles. As if location of poles that is there in left half plane, then system is stable. So in this region, if you have location of poles, then you will be having stable system, right? And if poles location that is there in right half plane, then we will be having unstable system. See here in S plane on vertical axis we have imaginary value and on the real axis we have real value, right? Here this real value that will be negative in case of left half plane and this real value that will be positive in case of right half plane. So based on the real component, one can understand stability. Like as if real values are negative, then poles are there in left half plane. In that case, system will be stable. And as if poles are having real value that is positive, then that is located in right half plane means system is unstable. And as if poles are there on this imaginary axis, then there will be marginally stable system, right? So that is the basic that one should know. Location of poles that defines stability, right? If real component of pole that is negative, then system will be stable system, right? Now in fourth criteria, we need to understand relative stability. Like you see, as if pole is approaching towards zero, then stability decreases. Let me explain that by one example. Here we have one system that is system A. And with system A, we have one pole that is located at S is equals to minus 3. And here I'll consider second system that is system B. And with system B, as if I say we have one pole that is there at minus 1, then system A that is relatively more stable compared to system B. The reason is here this pole that is far from the origin while this pole that is nearer to the origin that's why this system is more stable compared to system B. Right. So relative stability is based on location of pole with respect to origin. Right. As if pole is approaching towards zero, then stability of system decreases. Right. Now I'll discuss about fifth stability criteria. When poles are located on imaginary axis, at the time system is marginally stable. Right. That I have told you. But here one more thing that you need to understand. See, as if poles are repeated on imaginary axis, then it will be affecting stability. It will make system unstable. So poles should not repeated on the imaginary axis. See, as if poles are there on imaginary axis, then it is marginally stable. Right? It is not stable. It is marginally stable. But as if poles are repeated on imaginary axis, then it will be making system unstable. Let me explain that graphically. Here we have system A and with system A we have two poles on imaginary axis you can observe. One is there at plus J3 and second is there at minus J3. So this system is marginally stable but with system B here we have two poles you can observe S1 and S2 both are there at minus J2. So this will make unstable system, right? So this is very essential that one should know. If you have repeated poles on imaginary axis, then it will make system unstable, right? Now I'll discuss about last stability criteria. The poles which are close to the origin are called dominant poles. The reason is those poles which are closest to origin that defines system stability. Let me give you an example. Here we have imaginary axis and here we have real axis. 
with one system in total four poles are there you can observe see pole number one that is minus one pole number two that is minus three pole three that is minus two plus j2 and pole four that is minus two minus j2 so closest to the origin is s1 and because of s1 here stability that is affected most right the reason is as this pole goes nearer to the origin system stability is getting affected so this s1 is a dominant pole with this given system that one can say right so here pole s1 that is minus 1 for this given system that is a dominant pole as it most affect the stability right here one more definition that i would like to add that is based on robust stability this is what i'm adding based on the request of one of my student he asked me that what is the meaning of robust stability then that explains ability of system to remain stable even when there are variation in parameters or uncertainty see there can be variation in parameters like you may change frequency you may change phase of the system or due to some uncertainty system should remain stable so as if you change the parameter or as if some uncertainties are there still if system remains stable then you can say system is robust system right so that is how basics are there regarding stability of system and this basics that we will be utilizing in future coming videos with different methods of evaluation of stability i hope you have enjoyed this session thank you so much for watching this video